The name is The Village Creative, yeah. and um, we, I think we met three years ago. We've been doing events for three or four years. I've been photographing for about 14 years now, and um, started my business photographing families and seniors and pretty much anything, and then it grew into weddings, and then I decided to scale back and just do families. And I find that at the end of my family sessions, I'm usually in some of the most amazing places here in Maine on you know with beautiful light and beautiful people and at the end of my sessions I often will take a few minutes and just capture the beauty around me which is where my fine art projects have grown and become more part of my business. I am an alcohol ink artist. Um, alcohol inks are a fairly new medium. You apply it with a dropper. It's similar to a watercolor but oilier and thicker so to make it move around you need isopropyl alcohol. So you wash a certain paper with the alcohol first, and then you apply it with a dropper, and it has a lot of movement. So it actually is very conducive to watery, abstract, or landscape pieces that have that kind of movement in it. Um, I'm trying to do the opposite of it with my art. I'm trying to be much more exact with it. I've been practicing it for a couple years now. This has started during COVID. Um, it was a project for my son and I to do during COVID, and I just fell in love with it, and I kept going with it. It was certainly my outlet during COVID. <laughs> um, sanity saver, doing art. And so I did it for a while, and I just thought I would start making it a business. When you're painting or photographing or whatever, you're in it so much, sometimes you don't see the obvious, as with so many things in life. <laughs> um, so it's really nice to have the group to lean back on and just um, get that perspective. And it's also nice because when you're working on your art, it's alone most of the time, unless you're out in nature and somebody's, you're there with your family or something. But typically most of our art that we do is separate and alone. And so it's really nice to have that social piece. When we get together, it just, we kind of just let the conversation take us wherever it takes us. We do like five minutes of business, like if we have an upcoming yeah. <laughs> show or I have not like I've no, been involved in the PTO, so I'm always dragging them in into the artist night and um, yeah. which is great. And uh, so whatever we have coming up, we always discuss. And then it's of course, we just talk about life and our kids and, you know, what we're working on and yeah. all the good stuff. Jen McDonald is um, another painter in our group. Uh, she loves bright colors. She typically does florals. Um, she likes to blow them up and individualize each little piece of it. Um, she's been painting for a few years now and she's actually just started teaching a class at Artiscope, so that's a first for her. I do believe she's shown before but not as a whole gallery. So Anjana Zveshek is the, one of our painters and Anjana and I kind of joke a lot that we both see the world the same exact way. If you walk through the gallery you'll notice that a lot of our images and her paintings and my images are very similar. Um, she loves to capture the beauty of Maine as do I. We both have an eye for sweeping skies and lots of pastel colors and um, I think we're both very deep people in regards to our connection to the state and the, and the world around us. So you definitely will see some similarities between her work and mine. We have another member, Amanda Mitchell, who um, actually introduced kind of all of us together. We each knew her separately. And um, then we decided to start meeting once a month just to talk over art and talk over like what we're working on. and. And then we decided to have a couple sales. So we've done that together as a group and we've done different locations. We've done Amanda's house, we've done my house. And then um, this came up that we wanted to do a show. And so we were on the list for a long time, over a year <laughs> to get in. And it's most of ours very first show. And it's been really fun and exciting to have a show. It's, it's very different than selling at a sale. It's um, somehow you put yourself out there a little bit more than just selling a piece here and there. To do a whole show is, is a whole different experience. We named the show Nature's Palette from Earth to Sea um, and we took a long time trying to figure out how we wanted to name this because we really wanted something that would encapsulate all of our work um, from Jen's flowers to the landscapes to Mary's sea life and, um, and that felt like the best way to just represent our work and just a really nice title.
I first met uh, Amanda Mitchell, who owns Delaney Arts. I took a pottery class with her, and then she introduced me to Angela. And then, so we were talking one time, and Angela had said, I really have a need to like, do this on a monthly basis, to have this social piece in. And then you joined us she next through in, Angela, yeah. Yeah. and then Amanda brought Jen in. Um, so it's kind of evolved, and it's been neat. Um, Amanda is a potter. She's uh, taking a little break right now, but she's phenomenal. Um, she does beautiful sculptural vases and um, just beautiful work. So it was really neat because we had a little bit of lots of different mediums. I definitely feel like we get a lot of energy off of everybody. Mary, I'm going to share my little nickname for you. Oh, no. Mary, Mary is our, she has more energy than anybody ever met. I call her can't stop, won't stop Mary. But it's so great because she just keeps us even when we're, you know, we get bogged down in our work and our lives and she's like, nope, we're going to meet, let's go. And, and then we're always glad that we get together or we're always glad that we do the show. The shows are always fun and festive and we just get along really well and we, we like, do. we like each other's company and we love each other's art and it just is a, a really nice group of, of humans to be yeah. with. Yeah. Our families have become friends. Yeah. It's just really, it's really wonderful. If I could fill my whole house with Angela's work, I would do it. <laughs> I'm a, I know that sounds kind of weird because we are so similar, but she just paints in a way that speaks to my heart. I actually have several of her pieces around my house. It's kind of my little Ange art gallery. Um, <laughs> but I, no, she just she just finds the beauty in all the different places around Maine. And I know she she's so deep about her work and um, her colors are my colors and they just really speak to me. I also really love looking at Benjamin Williamson's photos. He's a very quintessential Maine photographer. He puts himself in situations to get photos that I just can't even imagine ever getting. I, he, I'm always inspired by his work and pushes me to, to push the limits a little bit more and think outside the box when I'm looking at a lot of the same places. So as Yarmouth artists, it is really special to have our work hanging here in the History Center. It's a space I've visited a couple of times. I know some people had never been in. Um, we encourage everybody to come in because not only is there beautiful art, but just the history of Yarmouth that's showcased in this place is really special. I know some of us have prints that are from Yarmouth, some are from away, and to just bring it all together in our, in our town is just really special. Slowly over the years, I've been selling my fine artwork on Etsy or just through my own website. Um, and I've, I've really wanted to do more with it. So as this art group grew and this opportunity came up, I was really excited to um, frame some work and have it in a gallery for the first time. It's been really cool. We wanted to do some murals and it just hasn't happened yet. There's always so many steps you have to go through to get some public art out there. So then we just were like, let's try to get a show together. We have enough pieces between the four of us and I think it would be a great show because we all have a similar theme that we all love the ocean and the sea and nature around it. So it just seemed like it would be the next step for us. We really, really spent a lot of time trying to make sure that the show was a cohesive experience, that our art came together as one collection. Some of our art is very similar, some of our art is very different, um, but we really, we, we put our heads together, we put together collages and really tried to figure out a way to make it all come together that represented who we are as a group, but also who we are as artists individually. This was the first time I've done big framed prints of my work and I just it was so exciting to see it and it's exciting to see it on the wall so I'm, I'm hoping to incorporate more of those onto my fine art website as well. Um, and the editing process on these is a little bit different too which is really fun. I know what I see when I'm there and then I get to go home and, and really just enhance the color and the light and the you know the movement and just make my goal is always to have somebody who's looking at my fine artwork feel like they are there, like they're a part of it and that they want to be there and, and really soak up Maine, you know, through, through my photos or, you know, the art that's on their wall. It takes a, a while to learn how to do anything precise. So a lot of my artwork was much more whimsical and it would have a lot of these little spatters um, on it. And that's just, you can't really control that. That's just when you turn the dropper over with the ink in it and it, it comes out and I, I love it. it. To me, it just adds to the painting, but sometimes it doesn't happen at all. A couple of my other pieces don't have a single drop, which to me seems miraculous. But as I've gotten better, I've um, kind of honed it in a little and learned some techniques. Um, but I also print things on tea towels, um, wine glasses. I kind of focus on home goods because I really want everyone to be able to enjoy 
everyday art is what I like to say. So if you can't afford um, uh, original print, you could enjoy in your kitchen a, a nice blue lobster on your <laughs> stove or wherever you're going to use your tea towel. And I think that's great too. because I think everyone should have some art in their life. Harbor Hughes is um, a print that I created a couple of years ago. Um, my daughter and I participated in a 365 day project for a couple of years, meaning for every day of the year we took a photo together and I, I did this over a course of five years. Um, so one day we were at the mall and it was gloomy and dark and rainy and I said, well, let's just go down to the beach and try and get our picture even if it's foggy. And as we came down the road towards Pine Point, the sky just opened up into the most amazing glow of oranges and purples and we just had the most unexpected and fabulous sunset um, and I captured this Harbor Hughes print right at the very end as the sun was really going down and the and the tones were turning from orange into the purples and the boats were just sitting so peacefully in the harbor and it's one of my favorites because it is just so calm and peaceful and makes me think about sitting on a dock at the end of the day and just soaking in those last moments of summer here in Maine. The octopus is the largest alcohol inks piece I've done. It took me several, several days just to get the outline and make sure it wasn't, um, the ink wasn't bleeding through in certain spots. And there's metallics. It's the first time I've used metallics in my alcohol inks. And octopus is always so great to do because they are so intriguing anyway. And the movement in them is so cohesive with the alcohol inks movement. So I really love doing that piece. I think uh, octopus in general are just so fascinating. I feel like they can get into any shape, any design. So when I did this long, narrow piece, I really felt like it was a view of an octopus maybe in a tank or something because they find mm. the shape of whatever they're in. And so I'm hoping to do an octopus series down the road uh, in different colors and different shapes. But this has been a really fun one. So Surfer's Retreat is an example of a photo I took at the end of one of my family sessions. I captured that um, a few years ago. And there are a couple of different thoughts of photography out there. One of them is that you capture things as they are and that is what it is. And then there's another side where photography and becomes art. Um, and I really ascribe to the idea that what I capture can then become art. Um, so as I was wrapping up this family session, I looked over and there was a surfer walking back um, back to the cars on Higgins Beach and the sky just came over him in just a way that it just framed him so beautifully. But the beach itself was actually loaded with people. So um, when I got home, I, I took that print and I enhanced the skies a little bit and I took out people and just made it look like this solitary retreat from the water. The Blue Lobster is probably one of my first technical pieces, more exact than some of my others. Um, to get the, the lines that I get without it blowing kind of out, as the alcohol inks tend to do, I do a very faint line with an alcohol ink pen, and I put the alcohol on the inside of that line, but I never put the alcohol up to the line because it will naturally bleed out to that edge. And then with alcohol inks, you have to layer them, otherwise you just get a big brown puddle. So you have to wait for it to dry, then layer it, dry, layer it. And then to get like a watery look, I often do a spritz with rubbing alcohol on it at the very end. So when everything's done and dried, I will do that. And then that will create kind of a watery mottled look on the piece. And as you can see here, it like hit the antenna. And so that made it a little hairier than it normally is, but it still looks great to me. So usually at the end of my family sessions, there comes a time of the day where it's, it's too, I don't work with off camera lighting or anything like that. I'd like to be free so I can chase kids around and play and not worry about lights. Um, so by the end of the session, it's getting a little dark and it's hard to see faces, but that's the time when the coastline is just glowing and absolutely beautiful with color. So after I say goodbye to my family, I'll send them off and usually we'll end up in the ocean in my jeans, <laughs> capturing waves as they come in and capturing those last moments of just beautiful colors that grace the sky and the um, and the ocean. It's important to me that my art represents things as they are while also enhancing the beauty and the feel of the things around us. So I may remove people from the backgrounds or enhance the skies, but I want people to be able to look at my art and still feel the beauty and feel like it is as realistic as possible. 
I think that's what makes artists so wonderful is we're planners, but we're not in some ways. We're just big ideas come or new opportunities come and we just jump on it as they, as they show up. And in the meantime, we're just perfecting our art and trying to make ourselves the best artists and people we can be. I spent 20 years in Long Island, New York prior to coming to Yarmouth, but I also grew up in Massachusetts prior to that. So we always were at the beach. We, um, we didn't live far from the beach. It was something we did as a family all the time, walking up and down the beach, collecting shells, going swimming, learning to swim in the surf, all that. And um, when we chose to move to Maine, we definitely had to be near the water. That's um, something we all needed, our family. And so it just seems to be that it's like an endless source of beauty. There's so many creatures in the ocean. There's so many um, natural, beautiful colors that are really vibrant that sometimes when we see it all day long, we forget it's there. And so I try to highlight some of those pieces. I actually never knew how much I loved the ocean until I was an adult. I grew up in the Bangor area, so we were a little more inland and we would go to Acadia and we always loved to go visit that area. But um, so after I met my husband and we moved here in 2006, I believe, I remember one night we were sitting down at the East End Beach and I just had this like overwhelming feeling of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get to like look at this. I can't believe I live here. I am so lucky to live here. And as I started my journey with my families, I really found myself drawn to the beach and the colors of the beach. And now I'm obsessed with it and can't imagine <laughs> living anywhere inland. Um, and really, I, I think it's always been a part of me deeply, but I just didn't know until I was out there living here and getting, you know, getting it on my camera. And, and now that's 100% my happy place is by the water anywhere. I think the beach is a full sensory experience, oh, you know? Yeah. You smell it, you feel mm -hmm. it, it's very grounding, you hear it, you know, you even taste the salt air. It's just, you know, when you've had it in your life, you just need to keep it because you realize how good it makes you feel. It's very centering for me to be by the water, to just listen, it's, it's funny, I have sound sensory issues. I have a really hard time with loud noises or repetitive noises, but I can sit on the beach and just listen to the waves over and over and it's the only noise that doesn't almost throw me over the end. It's very, very centering. If I'm stressed out, I go to the water. If yeah. I'm happy, I go to the water. If yeah. I want to take pictures, I go to the water. I, it's just a very centering place for me. And it's so great living in Yarmouth because every once in a while you'll smell this, you can smell it. Like, yeah. you know you live in a coastal town and then I'm like, I can't believe I live in a coastal town. I'm so <laughs> lucky. Like, just, it's, it's such a gift that I never take for granted. And even, you know, I have a lot of my families that I work with come from far away. And um, I'm just like, I've been out there a hundred thousand times at this point. And at the end of our sessions, I'm still just like, wow. Like, look at this. You're so lucky you're visiting right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yarmouth is amazing for a hundred thousand reasons. Everybody loves Yarmouth and we, we definitely appreciate this town. But what makes being an artist in Yarmouth is so special is just the support from the community. People want to come support local artists. They want to support local entrepreneurs. Um, we just had a show, uh, um, a sale this weekend and we had a lot of people come. Um, and I think people, our gallery opening was very successful. People were excited to come see the art. We had kids here, we had adults here, we had community members that we never met. Um, it just feels like a very supportive place to work, live and do art. I think it's all through Yarmouth that they support art. I know all the schools on every level support art so much. And they have uh, one of their biggest fundraisers is Silver Graphics, which celebrates the mm -hmm. children's art. And that's done through the PTO, but they take a child's art and they make it into something special, whether it's a print or a pillowcase or something like that. And then as you go up, uh, the middle school has artist night where they have artists come in and work with the kids and high school level, they do so much with the art. There's so many options there, so many different classes. So I feel like it's truly community wide that supports art. And I feel it's also a reflection of Maine. Maine has so many mm -hmm. artists and it's just, we celebrate it. And I think we just want to say thank you to the History Center for showcasing our work, for showcasing Yarmouth artists, for inviting people to come in and for giving us the opportunity to hang our work on gallery walls. It's a pretty amazing and special treat, something we will cherish and remember for a long time. Definitely. What a gift. Yes.
The Yarmouth History Center is located at 118 East Elm Street in Yarmouth, Maine. We are open 10 to 4, Tuesday through Friday, and it is free of charge to all visitors.